I'm very unfortunate in the Irish Hospice Foundation to have an extremely high calibre board and I'm delighted this morning to have so many of the board members of the Irish Hospice Foundation here mm -hmm. today. They give me fantastic support, as does our chairperson Jean McKiernan, who gives huge commitment and her own time to help the work of the foundation. So I'd like to invite Jean to speak now to reflect on where we are now, almost 30 years later, and some of her plans for 2016. Good morning, everyone. On Taoiseach, ministers, senators, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the launch of the 2016 campaign. I am proud to be the chairperson of the Irish Hospice Society, a voluntary organisation striving for the best care at end of life for all. For 30 years, we have worked alongside the voluntary hospice movement, healthcare workers, our political colleagues, and most importantly, the public, to raise awareness of the importance of excellence in end-of-life care. Our vision is that no one will face death or bereavement without the care and support they need. 2016 is the centenary year of the Easter Rising 1916, marking the birth of our sovereign nation. 2016 is the year in which the government invites everyone to remember, reflect, and reimagine to consider how the ideals of the proclamation of the Republic can best be met in contemporary society. The IHF has embraced this with a bespoke programme to engage with people from all walks of life on dying, death and bereavement. End of life is an intensely meaningful time for those who are dying, for their friends and family and for those who care for them. It is an inevitable part of our life cycle and de deserves its place in public dialogue and service responses. We are honoured to be supported in this work by Antishak and Senator Mary Louise O'Donnell, who has undertaken an in-depth look at how the state interacts with people facing death, dying and bereavement across all government departments to identify good practice and also where there is room for improvement. In April, we have another reason to celebrate. The Irish Hospice Foundation will have been in existence for 30 years. A number of 2016 special events will mark our anniversary and raise much needed funds for our work. We are an independent organisation which relies on public generosity as we receive no core state funding. We will also honour our late founder, Dr Mary Redmond, whom Lawrence has spoken of, throughout the year culminating in a Dr Redmond gala dinner next autumn. I hope you're free. <laughs> Over the last 100 years, through religious orders such as the Daughters of Charity, the modern hospice movement has evolved, bringing great comfort to many. 1980s Ireland saw the rapid expansion of the hospice movement so that today nearly every region has access to a modern hospice facility. More attention and training is needed for the thousands of healthcare professionals who provide care at end of life, be they care assistants, GPs, community nurses, hospital staff or geriatric, geriatric care staff. Our bereavement services are excellent in some areas and ad hoc elsewhere. Each year, <coughs> approximately 29,000 people die and we estimate that 10 people are profoundly affected by each death. As a result, there are 300,000 newly bereaved per annum. The bereaved can feel isolated without support, so clearly more can be done. Death is a universal experience and most of the care, comfort and suffering happens outside of health services, in our homes and communities. From our work in bereavement, Think Ahead and our public events such as the Form and End of Life in Ireland, we know that there is a hunger to talk to share experiences and develop better responses to dying, death and bereavement. We believe a better future can be imagined and made a reality. A future in which everyone can access the best care at end of life, be it medical, social, physical or spiritual. The hospice approach to care becomes the norm in all health settings with access for all regardless of age, diagnosis or location. Dying, death and bereavement are everyone's business. We feel the future is about giving dying, death and bereavement back to the public to encourage more open dialogue and awareness of what can be done by each and every one of us to make it a less painful and isolating experience. In some ways, we are returning to the spirit of the past where communities come together to support the bereaved. 
In 2016, we will embark on an extensive consultation with the public, civic society and the political arena on dying, death and bereavement in Ireland. We intend to listen, to allow reflection and to gather opinions on what the best care at end of life means to, for the Irish people. Expect an exciting public engagement programme to be rolled out in partnership with the Dublin City, Fingal and South County Dublin local authorities. These will include public death cafe conversations, engagement with civic and NGO organisations, including our bereavement work and our Think Ahead programme, a programme of civic and artistic engagement with libraries, a programme of engagement with our politicians and state agencies arising from the work of Senator Mary Louise O'Donnell, an ambitious fundraising programme with our corporate partners and a range of exciting events. At the end of 2016, out of this open public engagement, we will produce a charter for end of life and bereavement for the people of Ireland. This will capture what the best care at end of life looks like in Ireland in 2016. Together, let's embrace the three oars. Remember, reflect and reimagine to lead a national conversation of death, dying and bereavement. It is everyone's business. Thank you.